Welcome in to a special Sunday edition of the PHNX d podcast right here on PHNX. My name is Derek Montia. Of course, I am your mayor of PHNX. This man next to me, he is your vice mayor. He is my thunderstick, despite what Don's bread says after Googling what a thunderstick is. It's the one and only Jesse Friedman. I feel like there's a story there that I that I don't know. There absolutely is a story <laughs> there that you don't know, but that's I mean that's the case with so many things. Uh, you do know the story though of the Arizona Diamondbacks completing the three game sweep of the Chicago Cubs at Chase Field, and man, what a victory this series was! What a hard fought battle. The boys are back, and man, they deserve these wins because they fought hard. You got three outings from. Uh, the starting pitching i'll call them that they were three they there were three starters one did an excellent job the other two were there uh and they at least gave the diamondbacks a chance to win they ate up some innings and man this offense once again gave the diamondbacks an early lead in this game obviously we know uh about what happened uh yesterday uh for those of you that don't know the diamondbacks were uh they competed in a 13 inning all-time classic against the chicago i think cubs. people know about that game at yes this point. i think word, word has gotten around word about gotten the diamondbacks out. cubs game on saturday night but uh, man what a what what a thrilling series this is for the arizona diamondbacks and for their fans right like yeah this was a a daunting task ahead with the way the Chicago Cubs had been playing against other teams. The Diamondbacks had seven games in the month of September against the Cubs at a very crucial time where they kind of needed every win they could get. What the Diamondbacks got was six out of seven victories, six victories yeah. out of seven. Like uh shout out to Cody Del, uh, from, from, from CHGO for being Cody out Del here. Mendo. Cody Del Mendo for bringing us uh, whatever. I don't know what he did, but I, <laughs> we're happy he was here because the Diamondbacks <laughs> did good things. I mean, uh, to the in the series, the Diamondbacks were able to get an early lead for all of their starting pitchers, so they were kind of pitching from a position of confidence. Uh, once again, in this game, they did. Uh, Marte, Carroll, Fam, Gur- it was like everybody. Everybody contributed. Guriel, Walker, Rivera, they all contributed uh, early in the game to kind of give this team a three-run lead early on. In the first, and uh, Ryan Nelson wasn't great, but he went out there and he got himself out of a bases loaded jam. Uh, he was able to keep the damage relatively low while he was in. He limited it to two earned runs, but it was another short outing for Nelson. He was only able to go three and a third innings pitch. But uh, what are your thoughts overall on not only Ryan Nelson, but what the Diamondbacks were able to do? in this game and and in the series overall. Yeah, just just a, an incredible outcome for the Diamondbacks. And I, I've said this so many times this season that, you know, there's going to be times down the stretch when you think the Diamondbacks are are done, right? And, and after Fair. the series they had against the Mets, I think some people were asking those questions. And, uh, you know, I, I've been saying all along, there are going to be those moments where it looks one way and something else is still is still going to happen. Right. And I, I suspect that that's still going to happen a number of times the rest of the season where there's going to be moments the rest of the way where the D-backs look like a surefire, you know, lock to make the playoffs and maybe other moments where it looks like that might be the end of the season. Uh, and obviously it's, it's all going to come to an end here here in about two weeks at this point exactly two weeks is, yes. is when the is when the season ends but just incredible what the diamondbacks have done against the against the cubs uh not only this weekend but last weekend uh it was only a week and a half ago that we were talking about a a cubs team that had just trounced the giants in in a three-game series yep. i believe they swept the giants and scored a whole bunch of runs in that series uh and and yeah i mean entering entering last weekend at, at wrigley field you kind of wondered what that would look like for the Diamondbacks, and they they take three out of four in that series. They they sweep a three game series here, and I mean it. It looked we were talking about the Cubs as being like a pretty safe playoff team uh, about a week ago, and it's amazing how quickly this has changed. Where if the season ended today, I don't think the Cubs would even make the playoffs. I, I think they're I guess they're in a tie. I don't know how that tiebreaker would work. Um, but at, at least moving forward at this point, the Cubs are are not at all a lock to make the playoffs. I mean, right. they're kind of in this thing with with the Diamondbacks and the Marlins uh, and the we, Reds. And, we brought and, them down into it with us. There you go. That's said, I mean, that's exactly what's happened. Come on down. Uh, I think that at one point we were discussing this as a possibility, but I, I I felt like like that was such a far off dream, right? And I mean, the other teams that are in this race played exceptionally well including Miami Marlins. So they were able to keep things close, but 
Uh, I just it it almost snuck up on me that they were able to pass the Cubs because the Cubs did have a look, what looked like a fairly substantial lead between the third spot and the second spot in yeah. the wild card race. But the Diamondbacks, like I said, took six out of seven and were able to close that gap fairly quickly. Uh, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. was fantastic in this series. Uh, he made a pair of amazing defensive plays in right field tonight that really just showed his range. Like, I mean, I, I don't think we give Lourdes Gurriel credit for how good he is defensively, and sometimes he doesn't make the greatest plays at times. Like, sometimes sure. he makes plays yeah. look a little bit more difficult. He's definitely not as smooth or as quick as some of the other guys that are in the outfield. But, man, he made some great plays tonight that Rob... Uh, cubs of of extra bases and potentially some runs yeah i think i i checked earlier today i'm pretty sure lordis guriel is like 10 defensive runs saved yes, or something he's he here does. by himself which is wild yeah i think he had minus one outs above average coming into to this game so outs above average doesn't take into account your throwing arm so uh so yeah i mean i, I think it's pretty clear that his arm is where a lot of his defensive value comes from but you're right. I mean, he made he made a couple nice plays in in the outfield today, and it seems like we've said that kind of a lot this year. I mean, more than more than I expected to be saying that about Lord Escuriel, a, a guy who uh, has won a Gold Glove, but you know doesn't necessarily have the best defensive reputation. And even in in yeah. outs above average, I mean, I think he he was at minus one coming into today. You know, he was at minus five, minus six, minus seven. I think it's been over the last few years. So. You know, even if his range isn't truly that great, it's been significantly better this year with this Diamondbacks team. Um, so, yeah, I mean, his his defense was was good today and, and his bat was enormous in this series. I mean, Lourdes Gurriel had, you know, the big three run home run in the first game. He had three separate RBI singles in, in yesterday's game. Yeah. And then he had an RBI in, in this one as well. Six hits altogether, six for 13. It's hard to to ask for anything more. Uh, than what Lourdes is, has given the Diamondbacks lately. Uh, Mo came in here with the the conspiracy theory hot take. He said Cubs got swept on purpose to avoid Philly. Yeah, <laughs> avoid Philly at all costs, I think. I mean, I know that's what we said. I still, uh, I, I don't know, I still value pitching over uh, a hot offensive team. So I'm still worried about those Milwaukee Brewers. I say bring on the Phillies. But that's just because we have PHLY and I want to feud with our brand new cousins over there. Uh, <laughs> the Diamondbacks, though, did get some very good play offensively from Lourdes and a couple of other guys. Jordan Lawler had a hit today. Uh, the Diamondbacks were actually held scoreless after that first inning until the sixth when Jordan got on base, and then Cattell Marte hit a big two-run home run that basically gave the Diamondbacks the breathing room they needed to make this outing a bit comfortable after that. Uh, for that exact reason, for his contributions, uh, Cattell Marte is our king snake in this one. Uh, Cattell has just continued to be excellent. I think Damon said it while we were, Damon was, uh, furious that, uh, Cattell Marte was not it's an bullshit. all-star. He's, uh, still How? mad about it. Yeah. And He's I get the it. the best second baseman in the league. Probably. <laughs> I, How is he not an all-star? We are not hyperbolic here at all, but, uh, anyway, I will say this Cattell, uh, continues to be very good for this team. And, uh, I mean, right now the diamondbacks, need all of this offense they need Lourdes to be as consistent as he's, as he's been they need Cattell uh pitching it it's it it was weird series I mean we kind of joked about how you know the Diamondbacks after that series with the Mets of course we're going to come in here and and get a no hitter from Brandon Fott and get <laughs> uh basically a, a sweep of the Cubs and uh they didn't get a no hitter but Fott was really damn good in his outing yeah. um though they did not get a lot of length from any of their starters. In fact, the trio of Fott, Davies, and Nelson went 12 and two-thirds innings pitched over the three games. They gave up five runs total, and they end up somehow miraculously with three wins. Yeah, I mean... Well, yeah. technically, Davies doesn't get the win, but, I mean, the Diamondbacks no, got three yeah, wins. Yeah, Ryan Nelson didn't get the win either, yeah. but... Um, yeah, I mean, this is kind of how it's going to be the the rest of the way with Diamondback starting pitchers not named Zach Gallen or Merrill Kelly yeah. is the leash just isn't going to be very long at this point, right? We saw that yesterday. Zach Davies looked pretty good through four scoreless innings. He loads the bases to start the fifth inning, and and that's it, right? It doesn't necessarily even matter what your pitch count is. The leash is going to be really short. We even saw that with Brandon Fott on Friday. He was pitching a pretty darn good game, and I think he let one base runner in the sixth inning and he was done after five and a third, even though I believe he had 73 pitches at the time. 
But you can understand why the Diamondbacks are doing this, right? I mean, these are, uh, you know, in the case of Fott and Nelson, these are these are young pitchers. These are inexperienced pitchers. These are pitchers with ERAs that start with a five or a six. <laughs> uh, I guess I guess they're both five at this point. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're pitchers that don't really have much of a track record of success in the majors. And Zach Davies has obviously had his share of struggles this season as well. Um, and it's worked pretty well for Tori Lovello. I mean, this Diamondbacks bullpen has been outrageously good, Derek. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they, they pitched good. nine, it wasn't scoreless innings technically, uh, but they didn't give up an earned run. It was only, it was only ghost runners and, and errors, that kind of thing that caused Diamondbacks relievers to give up any runs yesterday. It was Correct. nine, nine innings without a single earned run. And then today, five the and Diamond, two thirds, yeah, five and two thirds no without an earned run. And and that's crazy. I mean, you know, I, I was good. The Diamondbacks were were able to get some insurance later in this game, but technically, those three runs in the first inning. Uh, I mean, that's all they wound up needing to actually win this game when it was all said and done. I just think about Tori's speech before this series started, and about how he said, "I just need you to give me everything for the next fourteen yeah, days." And when it right. came to that, it, it 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 is all of this kind of stuff, right? It is like. I am going to pull you when I feel like you are potentially going to, you know, start running into trouble. I'm, there's no more like leaving him out there to try to extend innings or to try to yeah. give the bullpen a rest. He, he's not leaving Ryan Nelson in there so that he has a chance to to get the win. Like, oh, we got to right. get him to five innings. Like that right. that logic is out the window That's at this point. Gone. It's if you look at it, if you look like you're out of gas in the fourth inning then you're out of gas in the fourth I mean, inning and, and we're gonna we're gonna go elsewhere to be fair he, he masterfully got himself out of the bases loaded jam but he did get himself yes. into a bases loaded jam yeah in the second inning with no <laughs> outs and i mean again that was very that that was terrifying and i mean uh, after that you know he he walked three in in his three and one third innings pitch uh i think most of those were in that second inning and so again you just you can't see that happen you can't see because that that was like going to go uh, you know south on them really fast right things were going to turn um but i do have concerns about the bullpen just being asking too much of the bullpen you know what sure. i mean like the d-backs probably would have used kevin ginkle and paul seawald in this game if too, they had if to they, if they yeah, had absolutely to. yeah and you know my boy ryan thompson let's give it up eight games still scoreless he gave up his second hit tonight since joining the team on August 27th. And of course, he got the double play to end the inning immediately after giving that hit. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. There's something to be said about it. Uh, it's it's just I, I, I like the, the the bullpen somehow turned it around. I know though that this is a different, almost a completely different staff, you know. But Miguel Castro went scoreless tonight. There were a lot yeah. of contributors. Uh, Scott McGuff is now on the 15 day IL. Yeah, Scott McGuff. I mean that that rules him out for for the rest of the regular season. Right. Um. So yeah, he's a uh, shoulder inflammation. We'll we'll see what kind of what kind of news there is there in in the next few days. But uh, Miguel Castro looked good in this game. I thought Miguel Castro. Uh, he did kind of dust one of the hitters off the plate. He did. He did. Uh, at, at one, I think it was Patrick Wisdom. Uh, which yeah, wasn't necessarily the the best look. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, you know, he's throwing his change up a little bit more. He threw some sliders for called strikes, which is a big thing for him. He looked better. Uh, Luis Frias, uh, you know, not always pretty, but he was, he was good, uh, able to get the last out, last couple outs that fourth inning and then pitched a scoreless fifth inning as well. Bryce Jarvis, he deserves his flowers yeah, tonight. He absolutely. was the replacement for Scott McGuff. Two innings, struck out one, nothing else, nothing else. Just boring old relief pitching just getting outs just getting outs and that's exactly what the diamondbacks needed was just a very une uneventful ending to this game especially with how much they had to utilize their pen in last night's uh thrilling extra innings victory and of course like i said earlier that game was an all-time classic and seven to six the diamondbacks had an early lead a two nothing cubs score three in the fifth to take the lead diamondbacks tie it in the sixth then it stays tied till the extra innings basically they scored in every extra inning but one and neither team scored in that inning right <laughs> it was just a wild game it was a wild game that seemed like it was never going to end and uh again the result is the diamondbacks winning one of the most exciting games i've ever seen them you know win uh by a score of seven to six and it just didn't really seem like that was possible cody bellinger kind of held 
in check by the Diamondbacks this season. He's he's yeah. had a lot of success against a lot of teams, but not so much against the D-backs. Yeah, Cody, the Diamondbacks. I don't know what I don't know what it is with Cody Bellinger, but Cody Bellinger did not look like Cody Bellinger in really any of these games that the Diamondbacks and, and Cubs have played over the last uh, <laughs> over the last week and a half. Uh, are you laughing at Saul's comment? Yeah, Saul Bookman <laughs> says Eddie Johnson is in shambles. You hate to see it. <laughs> Craig's in shambles, too. We convinced Craig to believe in the Chicago Cubs just so that he could watch them lose six out of seven to the I Arizona Diamondbacks. I don't think Craig ever believed in no, the Chicago Cubs. No, he doesn't. Cubs He's too smart for that. Being we honest. tried, though. <laughs> we tried. Uh, Cody there Bellinger. were moments where it felt like he was on. He was, he was coming back <laughs> on the that side, though. Uh, Cody Bellinger, though, five for 27 altogether in, in these seven games between the Diamondbacks and the Cubs. He did we have a homer at one point. He almost had a homer. Uh, in the game yesterday as well, which of course was was overturned. It was pretty clearly foul uh, on instant replay. Instant replay played a very big role in that it game really yesterday did. as yeah, well. It, it felt really like did. every inning there was there was a play going to instant replay. But yeah, I mean, stopping Cody Bellinger is a really big part of stopping this Cubs team. There is one hitter on this Cubs team who has been yep. far better than all of the others, and it is Cody Bellinger. And the Diamondbacks just didn't really let Cody Bellinger uh, beat them. And it wasn't because they were walking him a bunch. I mean, he only walked twice uh, altogether between these two series. So they were going after him. It, it seemed like they were uh, kind of avoiding throwing breaking pitches, uh, especially today. We saw that where Ryan Nelson was just sort of staying stubborn with his fastball, uh, which doesn't always work for Ryan Nelson. He can be guilty of throwing too many fastballs at times, but he was able to get a big strikeout of, of Cody Bellinger there and in the first inning. And I mean, the Cubs just let a lot of opportunities slide in this game. Yeah. Uh, they had lead off doubles a couple times. They had, of course, the, the bases loaded, no outs inning that you talked about earlier where they only scored one run. Uh, so yeah, I mean, Ryan Nelson was, was able to, to sort of walk the high wire. You know who I blame for this? Who do you blame? The CHGO Cubs podcast. Who are, I mean, what are you like what you're blaming? I, oh, I'm, I'm blaming one very specific thing and it's not Cody being, in the building for two of these three games. Okay. Uh, I'm blaming the CHGO Cubs podcast for claiming that this was the summer of Mike Talkman. Ah, mm. because it is not the summer of Mike Talkman. It is the summer of Corbin Carroll. Mm. And we all know that we've known that <laughs> since the beginning. Uh, Rookie of the year, by the way. Uh, all right. Well, we thank you guys for being here in the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to do so. Sign up for notifications. That way you don't miss when we go live or any of the wonderful shows go live. Speaking of Saul, make sure to not miss out uh, on, on, on Saul and Eddie Johnson doing their thing together because uh, that is an incredible duo. Uh, and Piece of Yoshi, thank you so much for your super chat. Uh, piece of Yoshi says a player who chastised the fan base, uh, fan base scoring on a wild play. Where have I seen this before? Javi Baez. Yeah, well, it's, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, sometimes, sometimes we're hypocrites. Uh, but, uh, if you're listening on the audio podcasting side, make sure to subscribe to us there. Leave us a review. Uh, leave us a thumbs up. If you're here on the YouTube channel live, we thank you guys, of course, for always being here in the chat. You guys absolutely make this show more fun. Uh, and, uh, Cog says it's the summer of Corbin and the autumn of Jordan Lawler. I'm with it. I am with it. Uh, Brett Johnson had security called on him because of his cheering. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, Brett, we have to have a talk, uh, J Brett about your cheering because, uh, we, we hear you on TV. That's all I'm saying. But, uh, <laughs> did, you hear, did you actually hear Brett on TV? <laughs> oh, you can, you can hear Brett. If you're in Brett Chase was on Field, ESPN. You there Lee you go. Johnson. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's take a look at the numbers, by the way, for this series, because we so want to take a look at the numbers for this series. Uh, what do we got here, Damon? No, yeah, it's not arrived yet. Uh, it's almost there. It's there almost it there. There it is. All right. Well, we got, uh, 19 runs to 12 runs, 29 hits to 26 hits, two errors to two errors. Man, it always looks so even, doesn't it, Jesse? After a even even after a sweep, it doesn't necessarily look like a sweep. But man, that uh that starting pitching ERA looks really good and it's great to see the Diamondbacks come through with runners in scoring position. Well, the D-backs didn't quite do to the Cubs what the Miami Marlins did to the Atlanta Braves over the over the past few days. We'll, Please we'll don't get, remind we'll me. We'll get to that here in a couple minutes. But, you, let, you let us down, Atlanta. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, this really comes down to Brandon Fott being really good on on Friday. 
uh, just, you know, letting, letting the team just be able to settle down. I think, you know, they uh, obviously the offense helped him settle down as well by sure. getting three runs on the board so quickly in that game. The Cubs did score four runs on Friday, but they were all sort of in garbage time. I mean, it's six nothing game. It's pretty hard to get seven on the board in order to, uh, or six on the board to even tie that game in the ninth inning. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, four of the runs that the Cubs scored in the series were, you know, didn't necessarily change much. Um, but yeah, I mean, the last couple of days, it's just been the Diamondbacks bullpen being outstanding and covering for a couple of starting pitchers who weren't really able to go deep and didn't really have their, their best stuff. And that's going to be a recipe for a lot of games. The rest of the way is, you know, D backs bullpen taking over pretty early, a little bit earlier than you're probably used to seeing and, uh, trying to piece things together. And it absolutely worked here over the last few days. The Cubs scored all three of their home runs in the ninth inning of game one. Um, so that's an impressive feat. That the yeah, Diamondbacks... that's, that's crazy. The Cubs had three homers in the series, and I swear they happened within like three, like four minutes. It was yep. like a four-minute <laughs> yeah. span where the Cubs hit those three home runs. They yeah. didn't homer at all in the rest of the series. Uh, pretty incredible, though. And, I mean, of course, you can't say enough about what the bullpen was able to do in this game with that 1.96 ERA. Uh, because this wasn't a case where the bullpen only had to work six innings in, yeah. in a series. The, right. This bullpen put in work, 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 work. Uh, and, and now they get tomorrow off. So that's why I think Tory was willing to to push the envelope in this game with with Ginkle and Seawald and whomever. Those guys have pitched the last two days, but they didn't throw that many pitches. Paul Seawald had a one, two, three inning uh, yesterday. Uh, you know, didn't didn't need to throw as many pitches as, as he usually has. So that opened the door for a lot of those those guys at the back end to be available. The Diamondbacks, of course, didn't wind up needing them anyway. By the way, Ryan Thompson, I think, threw six pitches in his inning of work today. And that's also with giving yeah, up. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, it sounds right. <laughs> yeah, double play uh, and, and like a couple two pitch at bats. That'll that'll do it. All right. Well, you know what you came here to do. We came here to talk about the wild card because this wild card continues to get wilder. Uh, and we have first your uh, out of town scores, if you will. We're going to get this looking a little bit more like the out of town scoreboard, but I, I really still love that we're paying for the expensive light bulbs on this bad boy. Uh, <laughs> the Mets finally beat the Cincinnati Reds. Thank you. Uh, Atlanta, what happened? Can we talk? Braves, Braves fans, Braves personnel, Braves team members. What happened in this series? Miami absolutely trounced the Braves in three games. Uh, and I mean, Jake Berger is the greatest living American baseball player alive right now, according <laughs> to the stats I've seen recently, but everybody else that we needed to lose lost pretty much outside of San Francisco and the Colorado Rockies took care of business in that series. <laughs> I didn't know Giants. that. I didn't know they made that game so close. I think it was, I think it was like 11, they were, six, they were or, up by a lot. Yeah. They were 11, up a six, lot maybe it was 11, point. seven, but the Rockies made that very interesting against Camilo yeah. Duvall in, in the ninth inning. Not a great weekend for the giants. Derek. No, it was pretty rough for them. No, they lose what? Three out of four, I believe. Yeah, Cause they had the double header with the yeah. uh, Rockies that they also lost. Uh, Damon, throw those scores up there one more time. I just wanted to go back over for the listeners. Uh, Cincinnati loses to the Mets eight to four. Miami trounces the Atlanta Braves sixteen to two. Washington beats the Milwaukee Brewers two to one. You got the St. Louis Cardinals beating Philly six to five, and then again that San Francisco Colorado game of eleven to ten with the Giants being uh, the Giants and the Miami Marlins being the only teams that came out on top today. So. Uh, how does that impact our wild card? Well, I'm glad you asked that because these wild card standings uh, look pretty good right now. The Arizona Diamondbacks take that <laughs> second spot somehow with now the Cubs and the Marlins and the Reds and the Giants all in their rearview mirror and a very important two game series coming up here with the Giants followed by what should be some fairly winnable series against the White Sox and the Yankees and then they wrap things up against the Houston Astros. So the Diamondbacks don't have the easiest road ahead, but they do have two series uh, kind of sandwiched here in the middle that are teams that really have nothing to play for at this point and really shouldn't be. Yeah, well, be careful what you I say, know. Derek. what am I saying? The, Why the am I even saying this? The Diamondbacks oh, were very lifeless against the New York Mets in that four-game series. So at this point, and, and that's something that, that I've been very much reminded of in the last few days, 
don't get too carried away with what the schedule tells you, right? Sure. Like the Marlins just went in and absolutely yeah. destroyed the Atlanta Braves in a three-game series. The Diamondbacks just lost three out of four to a very bad New York Mets team. And then they came home and they swept the Chicago Cubs who have like a run differential of plus 100, right? It's not, oh, and, and of course, I don't even get me started with the Giants and what the Rockies <laughs> have done to the Giants recently. Yeah. So, it's not it's not as simple as okay well you know you're playing the white Sox. all right you're gonna get two they have out a losing three record they're, gonna, they're not you know, gonna, you're playing yeah. the astros all right yeah, yeah. d-backs are gonna lose, lose two out of three there yeah. that's that's just not how this works at this point you're dealing in in like such small sample sizes of everything yeah. that you i mean obviously playing more difficult teams does play in at, at, on some level but there's just so much volatility at this point where anything can happen right this is the epitome of you know the 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 adage you can't predict baseball you no. you cannot predict what what is going to happen the rest of the way but we do know right now the diamondbacks are are in a good spot their uh their fan graphs playoff odds are now 56.5% uh, for whatever that's worth, that's the the first time we've seen it over fifty percent in in quite a while. And uh, yeah, I mean they have sole possession of that second spot. They don't exactly have a, a nice cushion <laughs> around it, uh, but they have sole possession of not the third wild card spot, but the second wild card spot after after the sweep over the over the Chicago Cubs. Um, someone in the chat brought up Gabby. Uh, we didn't do a, no, a good enough job of talking about Gabby Moreno returning from the yeah, he had a heck of a series absolutely too. breaking in the series. Uh, he went four for four in Friday's game. He went two for four in yesterday's game with two walks and an RBI. Uh, and then. And that RBI was pretty significant. Pretty crucial, <laughs> I believe, Jesse. I think uh, there's a video going around, something yeah. about that. One for four today with a strikeout. But I mean, this guy is just, I mean, Damon, hit him with it. Hit him with it, Damon. Your proclamation about Gabby? Yeah, drop the like. You well, gotta drop the like. What, Mr. Diamondback? Yeah, Mr. Diamondback. He's the best catcher in the league, according oh, to Damon. And yeah, I said he was the best catcher in the league earlier today. Yeah, it's there, there's no doubt about it. I don't know. Mind. I don't know if we're quite at that. I level, don't think it's debatable. He's he's <laughs> maybe been the best catcher in the league since August 13th when he was activated off the injured list. I, I think that I think there's yeah. a, an argument to be made there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, over in this series, I mean, he was seven for 12 at the plate. Uh, just continues to be extremely, extremely good at the plate since coming back from from that injury. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, another thing, it, it, Tori said before the game today that Gabby will play just about every day. I think those were those were his exact words. Um, the rest of the season, which is kind of what you'd expect at this yeah. point. I mean, D backs have, you know, especially this this next week, they've got those those couple days off built in. So, you know, you feel pretty good about probably playing him in, in both of those games against the Giants. But I wouldn't be surprised if Gabby starts basically every game the, the rest of the season. A lot of talk about uh, Gabby's dad strength. Yeah, Papa Gabby is super <laughs> strong. Uh, yes, uh, there's... Yeah, I mean, he's seven for fifteen since returning yep. from the paternity list. So there is there is some some evidence there that, for like, sure. Uh, that, that, that sounds like five hundred. Seven. That's for like 14? a four sixty seven batting. What did you say? Seven for what? Sixteen. Se seven for fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah close. Close five hundred. Um, I also someone brought up Bob Brenly's wonderful term of Gabby Lane. <laughs> oh, I haven't heard this. Yeah, it was like a, like an Abby Lane reference. Beatles oh, thing. Gabby sure. Lane. Yeah, like that, that he has this lane that he hits into. And I, bravo to Bob. I love that. I know it's there simple, but I appreciate that. Uh, if you guys haven't signed up for a PHNX Diehards membership yet, well, let me, let me start off with saying first, if you have, God bless you. We thank you for being part of the family. We very much have enjoyed all of our takeover events and all of the things that we've had, all the events we've had with our, our uh, diehards all season long. Uh, and even events that aren't ours, like uh, the Suns watch parties out at Dobson Ranch and everything like that. So we love you guys. We appreciate you for being diehards. And if you want to join all of this fun that we're having, make sure to go to gophnx.com and sign up for a diehard membership. You will get a ranch card to Dobson Ranch Ranch uh, Golf Golf Course, Dobson Ranch Golf Course. Uh, you also get a $50 gift certificate to Mountain Mike's Pizza, and uh, you get a free piece of merchandise from the phnxlocker.com, free shirt or hat, along with 20% off all future purchases. Uh, and so much more. So sign up today, become a member. You'll get access to all of our content. You get access to our Discord lounge and uh, discounts with our partners, uh, exclusive invites to events, and so much more. So join us over here and become part of the Die Hard family. Uh, we do have, of course, this upcoming San Francisco Giants series, Jesse. But before we get to that, 
Buster only brought up some interesting comments on the broadcast tonight on reports uh, that he has made on ESPN. Uh, basically, that the Red Sox have interest in bringing GM Mike Hazen back to Boston. Of course, after they parted ways with their current GM, uh, it's understandable because Hazen is considered to be one of the best GMs in baseball. Uh, and of course, he was part of their organization in the past. Uh, so from what we know, Hazen is under contract through next season. But what are, what are the thoughts on Mike Hazen potentially no longer being a part of this franchise? To me, it sounds like, I mean, I, I don't think it's very likely that Mike Hazen would actually do this. Uh, I believe the Diamondbacks hold the cards here where they can they can tell the Red Sox to take a hike. And yeah. he's ours and he's under, you know, we have him under contract through 2024. And uh, Buster Only, I believe, also reported that there's a team option for 2025, which mm. is something that we were not aware of previously. So the D-backs hold the cards here. The Red Sox can't just swoop in and, and just take them away. Uh, what could happen, though, is Mike Hazen could go to the Diamondbacks and say, hey, you know, there are there are people around the league who are willing to pay a handsome sum of money, um, you know, or, or whatever it is. You know, uh, the, the job that he would have there would be technically a higher ranking job, I believe, is like the president of baseball operations rather than just being the, the you know, the GM. So. Yeah, I mean, I th I think this is something that could be used as leverage for Mike Hazen in order to get a long-term extension in Arizona, uh, which is, I mean, wouldn't have been out of the question anyway, right? right. I mean, he, he's not really, like we said, it's just next year, and then it sounds like a, a team option for 2025. So those conversations might have might have been had no matter what. But yeah, I, I, it's not something I would be alarmed about if you know if you if you'd be very disappointed to see Mike Hazen walk. I I don't think that's a very likely outcome here. Only suggested a contract extension would be very expensive, uh, and now we have Elise in the comments saying I think this is his team leaking out interest so he gets an extension. Uh, and I think Elise is also an MLB GM who's just here under the guise <laughs> of being somebody named Elise. But Elise is just like Alex Anthopoulos that's, or something. That <laughs> makes all the sense in the world, actually. That explains so much <laughs> about explains Elise's comments. so much about Elise in general. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, of course, that's, like you said, it, it comes down to them uh, just saying no. And I think that in this case, the Diamondbacks do value Mike Hazen. You just have to look at what Mike Hazen was able to do this year with the few moves he was able to make and how those moves have impacted this team, including Tommy Pham and Paul Seawald. These are guys yeah. that weren't really the big names that, you know, I mean, we covered them when we were going over potential trade prospects or trade targets. I don't but think we ever covered Paul Seawald. We did call, yeah, we did cover Tommy Pham. Tommy Pham sure, was, though. yeah. And Jace that, Peterson and, and we wasn't exactly on the radar No, he either. was not either, <laughs> right? And so, like, that's the thing that's wild about it is even when we did cover Tommy Pham, I know for a fact that I was like, why are we even talking about Tommy Pham? This seems ridiculous. And then that's who they make the trade for, right? <laughs> so, like, the, the pieces that he was able to bring over, though, have contributed greatly to this team getting out of that rut that they were kind of in you know getting getting back on track and at times they've been responsible straight up for you know sealing victories and and you could say that about fam and seawald so uh mike hazen does have an ability to find talent uh and, and i mean i mean especially with this team kind of with with a minimal amount of uh you know i guess i guess you could say like money in a free agent case he, he, he has a minimal amount of assets you could say that, that. He can really yeah. move <laughs> you know in in the case of trades like sure he's just able to do a lot with very little it seems like and that's why it feels like he's such a valuable piece of an organization like this that needs a, a gm that can that can do that right right yeah i mean it hasn't all been perfect right i mean no. i mean there's he, you know he'll, there's, he'll there's say the that. scott yeah absolutely there's the scott mcguff deal doesn't look great the miguel castro deal right that that um that option is already vested for next season based on miguel castro's uh number of appearances so yeah it definitely hasn't all been perfect and and like you said he'd be the first person to tell you that he would like to have a few a few of these things back but like carlos um, says mike hazen probably feels like a genius for the Dalton yeah Marshall like that that deal has been a massive win yeah. at this point there's still a long way to go before sure. we really know the outcome of that trade but yeah i mean gabby moreno has been incredible uh, exactly what the diamondbacks needed behind home plates i mean they haven't had in, in years yeah. they've just been kind of yeah. piecing it together with yeah. you know Know, okay. Jeff Mathis and Chris Iannetta and you know all all these guys who are 
kind of toward the end of the end of their careers. Gabby Moreno is is a young catcher, a guy that you can really build around. That's been give Damian Miller his flowers. Yeah, well, I mean, that was a little bit before Mike Hazen, but uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I think by and large, you know, he's he's done a pretty good job here in in Arizona, and uh, yeah, I, I think he's you know, there's a reason that teams are interested in having Mike Hazen join their front office. Oh, yeah. he's deserving of of that kind of recognition, especially sure. the Red Sox that have that tie to him. So it's no surprise. It's just yeah, a matter absolutely. Of no kick rocks he's ours (laughs) uh another guy that's ours is dre jameson and reports per nick pecoro are that he will undergo tommy john surgery actually that's per tori lavello and nick pecoro um and nick had no part in that decision he just reported it uh but <laughs> Dre, Dre, you know, nick pecora was the one who decided nick, yeah, that Dre nick, jameson is gonna have tory tommy came to nick. And we, we all we all go to nick for advice but tory came to nick no um per tory uh Dre jameson will undergo tommy john surgery which we discussed in the past and honestly I, I i feel like it gives me peace of mind because it felt like it was inevitable anyway we've discussed the likelihood that he would have to have that surgery and what the chances are to kind of yeah. rebound from it without the surgery would be. And especially after the setback he's had recently, it felt like this was what was going to happen. So uh, on the plus side, like Jesse said, it doesn't really matter if they would have done the Tommy John surgery back when this decision was made or now, because he still essentially is going to miss all of the 2024 season uh, uh, undergoing this Tommy John surgery, most likely. So his timetable for return of the 2025 spring training essentially is probably still a safe bet or sometime around then. Um, but it's still unfortunate because we love Dre. We absolutely love Dre. He's, he's a tremendous competitor and he was a valuable pitcher for this team. So this sucks, but we also very much want to see Dre get right. So, uh, I, I hope that, uh, his, everything goes well with the surgery and we can see him get back on track very very soon and i mean it's going to be a long recovery but uh, i can't it'll be it'll be a great day to see dre back on the uh back on the on the diamond yeah and i've seen a lot of you know i told you so uh comments running around on twitter where uh uh you know people are making the case like yeah we you know it kind of seemed like dre was gonna need this from the beginning you might you should have done it a couple months ago uh and i see where those people are are coming from for sure uh dre that this injury initially popped up on july 7th that's when he was placed on the injured list with right elbow inflammation so, you know, if Dre had had Tommy John surgery on, you know, July 15th or whatever it was, yeah, he he would have had a decent chance to come out and actually pitch a little bit toward the very end of next season. Now, that's still possible. It's not completely uh, out of the question. If they brought him back as a reliever, he might have a shot to pitch toward the end of next season, but pretty unlikely. Um, so... Yeah, and in the grand scheme of things, this this probably doesn't make a huge difference, uh, you know, a couple months ago versus now. And I mean, as of a week or two ago, Tori Lavella was talking about how he was more optimistic than he was at the beginning of the process that Dre Jameson was going to be able to avoid Tommy John surgery. It seemed like things were trending in that direction. Uh, but unfortunately, as does happen sometimes in these situations, there was a setback. There was some, you know, some tenderness as it was uh, initially described. Uh, that, you know, after the imaging and everything has come through, Dre will, in fact, have Tommy John surgery. So, yeah, you know, just hope that hope that the process is is smooth for him and, and he'll be should be fine for 2025. I, I don't think I don't think for 2025, there's not really a functional difference between having the surgery in July versus having it right now. You still got plenty of time. Uh, you know, you're 18 months out from uh, like spring training of 2025, roughly. So that, that should still be fine. I hate this. I hate this, but it is what it is. Yeah. Um, what I don't hate is the Diamondbacks having uh, the San Francisco Giants in their sights here for a two-game series, and I don't hate what their bullpen has been able to do uh, without Dre Jameson lately because this bullpen, uh, I, and I don't know if this same bullpen will show up uh, for this giant series here at Chase Field, but hopefully they do because this bullpen uh, has been incredible. And uh, I might, I'm not going to delete the gif, but I might just, you know, stow it away for a little while. Maybe we don't need that gif anymore, but <laughs> uh, let's take a look ahead at this series with the San Francisco Giants. 76 and 74 record with a minus 14 run differential. They are six and four in their last 10. 
And uh, they're just kind of middle of the pack when it comes to starting pitching and relief pitching. Their their pitching is good. It's it's fine. It's not bad. But offensively, they haven't been very good this year. Defensively, they haven't been great. They've kind of been a team a little bit like the Diamondbacks, especially when it came to their pitching, where they've they 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 haven't they haven't had a complete starting rotation. They haven't had a complete staff at times. And they've managed to just kind of. <laughs> they've never had a complete. They've never service. had a complete staff. They just <laughs> it Logan, it. Logan Webb, Alex Cobb, and, and, and a bunch of rest. a bunch of like three inning guys. The rest That's basically what the Giants have done this right. year. Right, and I mean honestly, it's impressive that they have been. Uh, they they have a record of seventy six and seventy four. They're missing a lot of key personnel, and honestly, this team uh, is is kind of overachieving. So. This is the time of the year when the Diamondbacks really need to, you know, continue this role that they're on. I mean, they they just played extremely well against a very tough Cubs team. And the, they have the Giants coming in here with a day of rest. It really feels like this should be a a series where the Diamondbacks have an advantage. Yeah, the, theoretically, right? Uh, I mean, as we said before, like, all right, Zach Gallon and Merrill Kelly, two-game series against the Giants. On paper, it's it's in your favor, but who knows, right? Uh, yeah. If anything has taught, if we've learned anything in the last week, it's that you really can't predict how these things are going to go. But yeah, the Giants haven't had a good month. I know they're six and four in their last ten, but uh, prior to this three out of four series loss with the Rockies, they they won five out of six. Three of those were against the Rockies at home. Uh, they also took two out of three at home from the Guardians. So. Just not not good teams there. Prior to that, they lost their first six games in the month of September to the San Diego Padres and the Chicago Cubs. And the rest of the way for the Giants is pretty tough. It's these two games with the Diamondbacks uh, here at Chase Field, and then they travel to L.A. for four games on the road against the Dodgers. They're at home against the Padres for three, a team that they uh, struggled with earlier in the month, and then they finish at home against the Dodgers again. So seven of their final, uh, whatever this is, seven of their final 12 games are against the Dodgers. Uh, and obviously the Dodgers don't have a ton to play for at this point. I don't think they're catching the Braves and they've already clinched the the NL West, of course, that happened yesterday. But the Dodgers are still the Dodgers. And, you know, I, I don't think they're, I think they're still going to try. They're still going to, you know, there's still a difficult team to, to play and uh, not an easy finish here for the Giants. It's wild because when we had Mike Farron on and he was talking about the playoffs, I feel like what we saw the Marlins just do to the Braves is the exact kind of thing he's talking about. Like, I know the Braves weren't at their playoff best or whatever, but that's kind of what happens when these playoffs roll around. Like, you never know when a team like the Miami Marlins can all of a sudden just figure out how to be putting up 10 plus runs on the board almost every night and nobody nobody's going to stop them but it's only it's only a very small amount of time that they need to play that way for right you just kind of catch catch fire here around the mid part of september and then kind of like the like almost like what the phillies did last year right they snuck in they got that final wild card spot yeah and then they caused a lot of noise in the playoffs once they were there so it just feels like what we're seeing across baseball right now is like that kind of randomness of it and and that's what makes the playoffs fun uh and that's what makes having these extra playoff spots exciting it's also why you don't like it right because yes (laughs) it's just too goddamn random and it's just too unfair to those teams that played very well for 162 games to gain some sort of advantage only for them to kind of Eh, sit around and wait like four days to start playing baseball again while these other teams yeah. stay hot and don't, you know, they don't get out of their groove. They don't get out of their routine. They stay in it. Baseball is a very routine thing. We've seen that in every way. A guy comes back from injury. It takes him a while to get hot at the plate. Pitcher comes back from injury. It takes him a while to get right. I mean, it even literally takes them a while, like pitching in other games that aren't major league games to get back on track. So this is just a, a game of, I feel like being in the groove at the right time. And at least for the Diamondbacks, that this this series is a very good starting point between now and, and the end of the season with the remaining what they have twelve games left now. Yeah, yeah, and and eleven games left. Is it eleven? I think so. They have three, three, and three, so nine, and then the two game series with the Giants. So yeah, yeah, yeah I think you're right. It's eleven. Um, yeah, my my thing with the going back to the whole uh, twelve team playoff conversation. 
Uh, I just Here don't want to. Get I, off I, his I, lawn. I'm sorry. Just I have. To, I can't not right talk. You can't. Just, you can't like push my buttons and then and not wait for give me a chance to, to talk this. about this. We just can't get to the point where a 162 game season doesn't mean anything, Correct. right? Correct. You just can't. You Correct. can't get to the point where you play 162, you win two more games than you lost, and then you're in there. And and your chances of of doing serious damage in the postseason are not that different from a team yes. that was 30 games ahead of you in the standings. It just it doesn't do justice to 162 games of, you know, some teams just being significantly better than other teams. That's, there needs to be some level of separation. That's why we played 162 games. That's why we did that. And that's why yeah. we never played the other league. We only played the National League. We only played the American League. And we didn't even play those other teams that much. We just played 60 goddamn games against our own division. 80 games against our own division. Why? Because that defined who the winner of that division was and right, thus right. made making the postseason special. If you had a 20 game deficit in, in back in the old days, you could make that shit up because you actually played that team 35 more times. Yeah, like, right. It's just, it, it was felt crazy. that way. It, it felt that really way. did. It's, I am very really on board was, with but that. That's how it felt. But, I, I much prefer the balanced schedule. For no, sure. but that's what I'm saying, though. The balanced schedule even moves it farther away from the point of playing your own division so often. And even though yeah. that can be very boring. There was a there was a a means to it. There was a means to the end. There was a reason why they did it that way. And the reason why was the regular season was the playoffs. The playoffs weren't the playoffs. The playoffs were like a championship series of the best teams in the league playing each other to decide who in turn was the best team in all of baseball. But it wasn't like this. Hey, let's see who can get in and then what can happen in the playoffs. It really wasn't designed for that. That's the reason why baseball has this godforsaken 162 game season that <laughs> doesn't. If we're gonna if we're gonna do the, You love every minute of it, Derek. Ah, it's almost over, Jesse. I do love it though. This I love is baseball. a pretty long game. Speaking of uh <sighs> uh long seasons and and uh baseball rules and things, uh the pitch clock couldn't couldn't clamp this one down uh too far, Derek. I I don't. I didn't see the final game time, but I know that three hours and nine minutes. Jesse. Okay, that's actually not that bad. Three hours after and nine minutes. after it's two awful. innings, we were pretty close to an hour, which is like a four hour mm -hmm. uh, game yeah. pace. And it's because I called the it's police. because both pitchers, right? Jordan Wicks and Ryan Nelson both had like fifty pitches after two innings. They did. We had seen a hundred pitches uh, through two innings of this game, so it felt like it it might go. Uh, you know, four hours and whatever yesterday's game went, but yeah, Nelson uh, Nelson only went three and a third. He had seventy five pitches. Yeah, so. efficiency was not uh not much of a thing for for Ryan Nelson or Zach Davies. wasn't particularly efficient yesterday either. Seventy five yeah. pitches seems to be Tori Lavallo's new like stopping point for the younger guys, right? Like yeah. he feels like he's cutting them all off around that point, and he doesn't. I really think a lot of it has to do with with like where you are in the batting order too. Yeah. Yeah, how many um, times through the rotation. Yeah, like through. if you're going third time through and you just and you're not looking seat, great, Potsy. then yeah. yeah, it might not matter too much what your pitch count is at that point. Well, credit where credit is due because Lavolo managed the hell out of this series and he managed this team to a sweep over the Chicago Cubs. So uh, this is a lot of fun, and of course we have a lot more fun uh, ahead of us because, like Jesse said. Two more weeks from today. Two more. Two more in two weeks, Derek. We, we will, will be, know. We will, we will be back know. here. Doing a show on Sunday, two weeks from the day, talking about the Diamondbacks making the playoffs. Uh, oh, man, you, you said it, that, Derek. I threw that out there. Was I not supposed to? <laughs> Damn it. I uh, mean, that's not that's, that's not for me to decide. Yeah. But I, <laughs> uh, man, well, let's hope, let's hope I get out of this one. But Let's hope uh, that ages well. <laughs> uh, we thank you guys, of course, for being here. Real uh, quick before we go. Yes, sir. Uh, a couple people were asking for it, so I'm going to toss this guy up there. Oh. Oh, there we go. There we are. We're fucking back, baby. We are back, baby. How did I forget this? Bless you, Damon. Bless you. <laughs> we are back. The, aud the audio people still have no idea what yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, so what about. I'm screaming about is Damon <laughs> just threw up on the screen the most important division in all of baseball. It's the all-city division. Right. And now this division has grown by one team, and they are still on top. The Philadelphia Phillies are up there at 81 and 68, but the PHNX D-backs boys are back in business, baby. We're back in second place. We are three games back from the Phillies. The Cubs now are in third at three and a half games back. The Chicago White Sox, they are just trailing the Cubs just 
a little bit at 24 and a half games back. And then the Rockies round out the pack at 25. Games Big week back. for the Rockies. Big week for the close, Rockies. Close it a little bit. They I mean, did. They, they're, this is the toilet bowl. They did. Well, <laughs> like the Rockies are in danger of w- losing 100 games for the first time in franchise history. Uh, and I think that they are definitely in danger of that. They're seven losses away. However, the Rockies, I think, have more games against the Chicago Cubs left. So, to be honest, do work, Rockies. Yeah, I think they do. Yeah, win right. that. Win those games against the Cubs. We're we're on your side. Uh, all we the, did. All uh, we did have some people talking the other day, which I think does make a lot of sense about how the Phillies don't really belong in this like with their full season record, we should just probably just go from the day that, lost, that PHLY won, yeah. launched. Yeah. And I believe after fr- since that day, the Phillies have gone two and three. So Damon. So if we put it, if we put it back up there, where would like, just if we just go by win percentage, uh, two and three, that's, that's gonna, a 40% that's put them in, in third. Yeah. That's they're in, put them third. in third. So they're in third. as far as we're concerned, the PHNX D backs boys are back in first place. You know what, guys? Fuck that. Let's yeah. just win this thing. Let's just let's, win the whole no damn thing. No asterisk talks. Let, let's yeah. just let's just have a better record than the uh, Phillies. Let's I'm, get the I'm, first wild card. Juice me up. Goddamn brick wall. So the right so now. the let's Phillies. Go. Now I'm let's looking. Go. Now I'm getting sidetracked looking at the Phillies schedule. The Phillies have three <laughs> at Atlanta the next few days, which which Wake seems up, like it, which seems like it should be difficult. Yeah. But uh, I don't know what happened over the weekend with the Marlins. They ran into the buzzsaw that is the Mar- Marlins. There you go. Uh, and then and then after that things get easier for them they have four at home against the Mets three at home against the Pirates and they finish on the road against the Mets so not a not a particularly difficult schedule for the Phillies to finish things out Mets (laughs) I don't don't know Uh, I'm just I'm still mad at them Uh, anyway uh, now I know that must that must be how the Cubs feel about us right now the way we feel about the Mets is probably how the Cubs feel about us the Cubs are probably I think they're okay with not playing the Diamondbacks again tomorrow. <laughs> we'll just put it. We'll just put it that way. I would suspect they're they're well pretty said. ready to get out of town at this point. Well, we are ready to get out of here, but we thank you guys so much for joining us here uh, tonight on this special Sunday episode. You can follow us on Twitter. I am at Cap underscore Caveman with a K. This maniac next to me is at Jesse and Friedman. Uh, the people's producer behind the Mac over there is none <laughs> other than Damon Dog. Uh, of course, we are Damon's dog. And you can follow him at Damon Dog. That's D A W G. Of course, our show is at PHNX underscore D backs, and all roads do lead to at PHNX underscore sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Oh, man. We, we, this was a fun one, you guys. And we thank you guys for watching. We thank you for being here. Uh, we always appreciate your time. Uh, But remember, kids, baseball is fun, but it is so much more fun when you are in the second wild card spot. Let's go.